When we look at the last, I don't know, two years, one of the things that sticks out around the central bank is that the Federal Reserve was holding interest rates artificially low at 0%, uh, and they also were conducting quantitative easing, even though inflation in the summer of 2021 got over 5% and by the end of the year was over 7%. What is the importance of realizing in hindsight that that probably was a mistake? Is it something that you can kind of ascribe uh, a, a level of uh, severity in terms of the problem we're experiencing now? Uh, or how do you kind of analyze that action? Like that's such a crazy thing in hindsight that they were still doing that. How do you look at it? One of the, the challenges I find is, is determining what is a mistake and what is intentional, right? So if they know that there are super high debt levels and the only way to discharge them is through inflation. Um, you could make an argument that it was a mistake. Um, whereas, so it's kind of like, are they smart, but then being misleading or are they actually dumb, right? So it's kind of like one or the other. Um, there was a BlackRock paper written in 2019 before the, the pandemic. And it was like, you know, the next downturn, monetary policy is not going to be enough because interest rates are so low and debts are so high. So we're going to have to do significant fiscal stimulus. Um, but that can be inflationary and drive rates up. So they're going to have to keep rates low through monetary policy. So you're going to have to have coordination between fiscal monetary policy. Uh, but then the challenge is that that can cause runaway inflation. So that's going to be managed very carefully. So they, they, they actually kind of laid out the whole playbook ahead of time. And and that was both BlackRock and it was uh, it was advised by Stanley Fisher, for, former former Fed official, and of course they didn't predict a pr pandemic, but so it's it's kind of even bigger than than that paper would have suggested. But we actually followed that playbook almost step by step in terms of watching what these policymakers are doing, um, and so you know I think that they they over they certainly overdid it. I think even in their view, I think that part I think part of the original one, they wanted to let it run hot for my first reason that they they wanted to burn some debt away. But I didn't think that they they thought it would get this hot this quickly. Um, and I think if they did, they probably would have done certain things differently. And I think it's because a lot of their models are just not not great. I don't I don't think they're looking at at oil capex, the real world supply side stuff. And I also don't think they're making a great distinction between broad money supply and base money supply as its impact on inflation. I just think that a lot of their models are out, out of date and that the models are kind of bureaucratic. I mean, they're 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 these large institutions, a lot of academic input. Um, and I don't I don't think they have like the 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 rapid learning effect that you see more in like the business world. When we think about this inflation, I want to talk about two specific uh, contributions. Uh, so we're talking about the data and how they didn't think that inflation would get this hot this quickly. Uh, the first one is what I'll call kind of external events. So obviously the pandemic is one that you mentioned. There's also been uh, supply chain disruptions that have kind of come in the wake of that. There's been geopolitical conflict with Russia's invasion of Ukraine. How do you anticipate them uh, either trying to uh, see these events coming, to analyze them in real time? Like how much of an impact do these external events have on changing their policy? Or is it something where they just have their policy, they're going to execute their plan, and although these things happen, they don't really either pay attention or they end up not actually being willing to change the plan uh, regardless of what happens externally? I think these external things eventually change their plan, especially as expressed through markets. Um, and so the Fed has to kind of put out fires as they come. Uh, and so the, these events kind of, you know, end up showing up in markets, which then ends up having to be the things that the Fed has to respond to. So, for example, they, you know, in, in, in 2019, I bet none of them expected what they'd be doing in 2020 at the scale they were doing it at. And so they had to, you know, I mean, they had an emergency meeting in March 2020 and they were kind of changing their plan because the Treasury market broke, which I don't think was on like, you know, their 2019 bingo cards. Um, think you know things like what we're seeing geopolitically. It's challenging because it's like it becomes self-referential. Usually, um, you know the the problems are like when you have long-term debt cycles blowing up, and then you have more inflationary periods. That leads to more discontent and more geopolitical struggle, which then leads to more inflation. And and so it's kind of that vicious cycle. Uh, that's generally what you see in these periods. And so one leads to the other, and one leads back to itself. Um, and, you know, when it comes to, for example, what we're seeing in, in, say, you know, Ukraine, Europe's energy prices, so natural gas prices in Europe, which, which, which if anyone has looked at them, they look like a Weimar chart. It's like it's a horrifying price chart, as, you know, compared to what we're what we're experiencing in the United States in terms of energy prices. So no natural gas prices soared, but that happened in late 2021. They were already encountering challenges with that. And then, the, you know, the whole Russian invasion just added more problems on top of that. It didn't create the problem initially. It just added layers of, of additional risks and insecurity and, and additional volatility and, and inflation on top of what was already 
you know, a physical constraint in terms of natural gas and, and other things that were happening there. And so I think that's going to be the theme of the 2020s is basically problems feeding back on, on making the problems even worse.